We are following new data on the economy this morning. According to the U.S. Labor Department, 339,000 jobs were added in May. That's much more than the 190,000 predicted by some economists. The unemployment rate rose to 3.7%. So joining me now is Lori Bettinger. She's the president of Bank Alliance and the former director of the Troubled Asset Relief Program. Very good to have you here. Uh, so, you know, what are we to make of these jobs, uh, the jobs report, the numbers? Um, what does this say about the current state of the labor market? Good morning. To me, this jobs report is just sort of goes into the well category. You know, it really be expectations. We saw hiring across so many sectors and including I mean, what was surprising to me was there was, I think, a 25,000 job gain in construction, which is something that we've heard, you know, has been really affected by the rise in interest rates, which makes it more expensive to buy houses. But, you know, it just feels like at least the job market is firing on almost all cylinders. Um, you know, the sort of hospitality and leisure sector continues to be really strong, probably especially going into the summer vacation season. So, you know, for all the doom and gloom talk out there and all of, you know, the eyes looking for, signs of a recession or a pullback in the economy, I don't think this is the jobs report that would, you know, lead you down the direction. Some stuff to unpack in there, right? We saw the unemployment rate go up a little bit, but I mean, this seemed like a very, st another month of a very strong job market. Which should be good news, right? We should be all happy. Uh, right. But, the, but of course, we know what that means. The domino effect is people are making money. That means they're going to spend money. That means there's no reason for prices to go down, which may mean there's no reason for the Fed to slow down on these interest rate hikes. And right after the last one, there was this, this general feeling that, whew, that's the end of the hikes. But now I don't know. I think that's exactly the case right now, you know, and especially coming into this job support, we were hearing a lot about the pause or holding, you know, that maybe in a few weeks here in June, you know, the Fed would just keep rates steady and see what happens. But it's hard to know exactly how the Fed would look at this report because, you know, you, as we said, you know, large numbers of job growth. And, you know, we saw earlier this week, you know, the number of job openings increased too. So pretty consistent signs out there that we have a really strong job market. But the unemployment rate did go up slightly and wage growth slowed a little bit, which, you know, from the Fed's perspective and talking about inflation is a good thing, you know, it's slightly below um, the actual inflation numbers. So, you know, it's one of these things where, as always, I think it's, you know, very hard to be a decision maker at the Fed because you're using data that looks backwards mm. and you're trying to take actions that impact the future, but not immediately, right? Like if someone raises interest rates, it probably doesn't affect all of us as consumers, you know, tomorrow or the next day, all of the, th all of the steps the Fed can take have a lag. And again, the data you're using is backwards looking. So right. it's hard to know how this is going to play into their calculus. And, you know, I don't, I'm sure everyone's busy analyzing this. Uh, so listen, before we let you go, uh, crisis averted. Uh, they figured out how to, how to pass a bill, well, soon to be passed bill uh, to raise the debt limit um, in Washington. It didn't seem like at least, you know, Wall Street was particularly nervous about what would happen. This has become like a recurring nightmare for the country where we always come to the edge and then come back. But was there any long term damage uh, to the economy over the risk of a debt default? It's a great question. I agree that it didn't seem like, you know, Wall Street was particularly concerned. I mean, you certainly heard a lot about the need to you know, raise the debt ceiling. But we saw, again, strong consumer spending in April. So it didn't feel like, you know, people were pulling back on that. Clearly, employers weren't, you know, sort of going into a hunker down mode with concerns. But again, like, I think the concept of a default uh, of a default of a default of our debt is sort of unprecedented. And no one really knows what would happen. So in a way, I think that makes it harder to sort of visualize and know what steps you would take. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure that it has, you know, a big long term impact. I think by now, we're used to dealing with uncertainty, we're used to sort of expecting the unexpected. So to your point, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of immediate damage. But, you know, who knows? We could find ourselves in a different place, you know, either, you know, different a few months down the road. But for right now, it seems like hopefully, you know, we dodged that one. Yeah, indeed. Lori, thank you very much. Thank you.